Good afternoon guys, I hope you all are having a wonderful weekend. Today is Sunday, June 9th, and tomorrow, on June 10th, Trump is set to implement tariffs on Mexico. And what I really want to take some time to talk about this weekend before this happens is how this might impact the auto industry. We all know that a lot of cars are manufactured or partially manufactured in Mexico before they're brought over the border back into the US. So these tariffs could really impact the auto industry in terms of the dealerships, the manufacturers, and the consumer. So let's just take some time to kind of unpack this issue and look at how these tariffs could impact the auto industry here in the US. So before we even get started on this, I just want to say I don't want to get involved in the politics of this issue. That's not what this video is about. This is only about if this happens and if this continues to scale up to a 25% tariff, here's some of the effects we might see in the auto industry and how it's going to affect us here in the U.S. So starting from square one, what is a tariff? So tariff most simply is a tax on an imported good. So for in this case, the U.S. will be implementing a tax on goods imported from Mexico when they cross the border. So tariffs are not a new thing. They're very common practice in all countries across the world, but we've been hearing about them a lot lately because of President Trump's move to use them as leverage against other countries, namely China and Mexico at this point. But what's kind of unique about this situation is that President Trump is actually suggesting or recommending to use tariffs against Mexico to influence Mexico to act on a political issue being border security and illegal immigration into the U.S. Uh, it's actually very rare to ever use tariffs to influence another country on a political issue. It is not, however, uncommon to use tariffs to uh, influence a behavior on other economic issues. So they can be used as leverage, and that's not necessarily new. It's just we're seeing that a lot with President Trump's presidency. But that's kind of the background on what a tariff is and how it can be used. So in this particular situation, President Trump is suggesting and recommending that on Monday, June 10th, a 5% tariff be implemented against Mexico. This tariff will increase by 5% every month starting July 1st, August 1st, September 1st, and so on, up to 25%. In order to stop this tariff, President Trump is asking Mexico to work on and slow down the immigration, illegal immigration over the Mexico-US border. So because this is related and tied to a political issue, it's really hard for analysts and us as consumers to project when this tariff might end, when it might stop, or how high on that scale it might get. Will we ever see a 25% tariff? It's pretty unlikely, but completely possible. Are we going to see a 5%, 10%, 15% tariff? It's really hard to say. But there has been some preliminary research on the auto industry and how these tariffs will impact prices. So let's just kind of start at the 5% level and take a look at how this will affect you as a consumer first. The Center of Automotive Research has done quite a bit of uh, investigating into this issue. So if you're interested in more specifics on the research, go ahead and check the description and I'll have a link to our website which will have more information on this story and it will also be updated if you're watching this video in the future. Um, but we'll also have kind of all the sources that I'm using and a lot of the research there so you can get to it if you really want to dive into this issue. But the Center for Automotive Research estimates that a 5% tariff would increase the price on an average new vehicle in the United States by at least $250. However, vehicles that are imported from Mexico, like the final product is assembled in Mexico, the whole car is imported to the U.S., a 5% tariff would raise the average price by about $1,100. And if we saw a 25% tariff, that price increase could be over $5,000. So even at this 5% tariff that's going into effect on Monday, we're going to see an increase in price of several hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars on most vehicles here in the U.S. Now, this increase in price at this level, most manufacturers are actually going to eat that cost. So the consumer is not going to necessarily see that increase in price. However, if you're going to buy a new vehicle while this tariff is in place, you may find that a dealership or a manufacturer is less willing to negotiate or give you as good of a deal because their margins have been essentially decreased by up to close to five percent 
uh, because of this tariff. Right now, it seems a lot of auto manufacturers are kind of expecting this to be a relatively short-lived short tariff. Um, part of this optimism is coming from the fact that Mexico has sent people to Washington, D.C. to begin negotiations on the issue. So hopefully we can find a quick resolution to this and everything can more or less return back to normal. But we should also be aware of the impact and knowledgeable on the issue going forward in case that doesn't happen. So if we fast forward about three weeks to July 1st when that tariff bumps up to 10%, that's when consumers are really going to start to feel a pinch of this. Because at that point, manufacturers aren't going to be able to eat that 10% tariff all on their own. It would be way too much of an impact on their bottom line. So they're going to have to start to transfer some of that cost over to the consumer. Another part of the industry that's often overlooked with regards to this tariff is the automotive repair industry. Just like building a new car, a lot of the parts for repairing a car still come from Mexico, or at least in some way, shape, or form processed or manufactured in Mexico before they come to the U.S. So even at this 5% tariff, which will be implemented on Monday, the consumer is likely going to feel that increase in price directly um, when they go to repair their car. The margins are much lower on automotive repair for the most part, uh, so it's more likely that that increase in price will be transferred directly to the consumer. And if these tariffs continue throughout the summer, it's very likely that the cost of repairing vehicles will continue to go up. And because of this vast impact on the automotive market, there's been a reaction by the stock market and by investors, and that's kind of been reflected in the stock prices. Towards the end of this last week, uh, prices rebounded a bit as there's been kind of more positive news that Mexico is working to hopefully come to a solution. Um, so that's kind of helped prices rebound a bit, but they're still quite a bit down this year versus where they should be based on kind of growth and overall performance of the company. But to step down and scale a bit, if we talk specifically about dealerships and their impact, um, obviously they're going to have to kind of raise prices a bit to adjust for this tariff as well as uh, work with maybe more limited manufacturer specials or discounts. Uh, again, trying to figure out a way for uh, car companies to eat this tariff at the beginning, but as it increases, it's going to be very hard for these new car dealerships to hide the increase from these tariffs, and eventually the prices of new cars is going to have to go up. And that likely will drive away a fair bit of consumers. Consumers may flock to vehicles that were less dependent on Mexico and therefore their prices have not inflated. However, those vehicles are actually becoming pretty hard to find. At least uh, many of the parts for vehicles are manufactured or assembled in Mexico and brought over the border to the U.S. or to another country for manufacture in South or Central America. So one trend we may see this summer if these tariffs continue is that uh, used car sales actually become much more important to the marketplace. Obviously these cars have already been assembled, they're already in the U.S., so tariffs are not going to apply in any way, shape, or form to used cars other than getting them repaired. So you got to keep in mind too, if you're looking at a new vehicle, but because of prices increase, you switch to a used vehicle. Also keep in mind the reliability of that vehicle and or whether or not you're under warranty. Because if you have to take in to get it repaired on your own dime, that repair cost is also going to go up. So as a consumer, just kind of be aware of the situation. Maybe you want to jump the gun and look into purchasing a vehicle sooner rather than later. Or if you're in the midst of the tariff, uh, where it increases to 10, 15% towards the middle and end of summer, maybe it's best to wait. The bottom line here is that these tariffs greatly complicate the automotive industry here in the US because these parts and goods and vehicles themselves travel over the border multiple times. Border agencies aren't even clear on how they're supposed to tax these imports. Are imports supposed to be taxed once as like the final most product? Are they taxed every time they cross the border? For example, a manufacturer might take raw materials from the U.S., send them to Mexico to have them turned into parts, bring those port parts back over the border where they're assembled partially, then maybe it goes back to Mexico to have a few more pieces added on and final assembly done, painting, something like that, and then the final product comes back to the U.S. So that's like two or three border crossings. Is it taxed every time it crosses the border, or should it just be taxed as the final product of that process. So what's kind of hard in this situation is that these tariffs seem very rushed to be implemented because they're being used as leverage. Uh, and because of this, 
A lot of people don't know how to react, including the automotive industry, consumers, investors, and even border agencies. So going forward, it's important if you're in the automotive industry or just as a U.S. citizen to pay attention to this issue, stay up to date on it, and just be aware of what's going on and make informed decisions, especially if you're looking at buying a new or used car this summer. So if you're looking for more information or you're watching this video in the future and you want updates on the situation, go ahead and check out the link in the description or the comments and hop over to our website. We'll have uh, information there uh, with a whole bunch of sources and updates on the story so you can stay up to date on it and uh, also have a place there to comment and communicate with others who are concerned on this issue. But thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. As always, I appreciate having you here and uh, make sure you hit that like button, get subscribed for more videos like this one, and we'll see you next time.